you engage in something and you really immerse into something and you just you're just in the moment like you feel true happiness and listen it doesn't necessarily always has to be hard work or something it could also be you being engaging in a very interesting conversation with a friend spending time with others but you're really in the zone you're listening or sharing a story and you really enjoy it you're not thinking about taxes and, and dinner for uh, what you're gonna have for dinner or pink unicorns or whatever you're just really there you might have thoughts and you just feel truly happy and then sometimes you might wonder but where does it come from where is like sometimes i'm randomly happy observe that and you will also realize in those moments that you can you can experience true happiness Number five is Millionaire Fast Lane from MJ DeMarco. I also have some notes here because I want to, of course, present you a few facts about the book that make it so worth reading. So bear with me. So I'm not going to miss out the most important facts about each book that I think have helped me the most. And Millionaire Fast Lane is also very applicable to business. So not only for poker, but especially the mindset that he's teaching towards money, towards the freedom that you want to acquire is essential for poker. And in order to have a strong mindset in poker, you need to handle your money very well. That should be pretty obvious. You need to see the benefits of short-term sacrifices for long-term benefits. I mean, this sounds very familiar in poker, right? We speak about long-term, uh, in the long run, we we might make a lot of good decisions that unfortunately are not going well in the short-term, but will bring us a lot of money in the long-term. And this, this book eradicates a lot of the fallacies that are being taught by society, fallacies uh, that, for example, jobs are safe, um, that you can work your way up um, to become a millionaire, but... You know, I, I started off in Brooklyn. My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. He explains that this will take, um, yeah, until you're 50, 60, 70, and then you have reached some sort of financial freedom, but then you can retire, you're already old, uh, you have health issues because you have worked your entire life. Um, and yeah, these kind of fallacies are, or beliefs are being taught by society, by school, and he's eradicating those in this book. This time next year, we will be millionaires. Which, which I really liked. Um, yeah, and of course, and also how to develop a very, very strong mindset um, to towards making money. And more importantly, what a lot of poker players struggle with is to save money, to not live above your your income. I see a lot of poker players banking some uh, tournaments left and right and then throwing it out of the window right away or playing way too high stakes and then losing it all ultimate, ultimately. And this is, of course, essential poker, right? Money management, book, uh, bankroll management. Um, so as I mentioned already, not only a book recommended for, for poker players, but especially also those who consider going into business and you're not really sure yet. Like you might still have this belief, ah, should I go in a safe job? Maybe you know it, your family teaches you, yeah, take a safe job, go there, uh, take the safe route, don't try, don't risk something. And then you ponder, you're not really sure, should I go into poker or maybe create a business or should I listen to my family? This book will help you to make the proper decision. Um, so very, very good read. It's it's also delivering some interesting facts that the jobs that we think are safe are not so safe anymore. So this argument of, hey, but you know, a traditional job is safe, doesn't really count anymore. Um, and what I really like about this book is it keeps things very practical. For instance, how to measure affordability for your current financial situation. Would you, for example, regret buying a gum? No, of course not. So if you need to worry about uh, whether you can afford something or not, you're very likely not able to afford it. And um, I like these practical examples. It's it's very generic and it, of course, there are exceptional situations where it might not apply for it, but for the grand scheme of things, I really like it. And it really helped me to make better decisions, to handle my money, to make good decisions, good investments, and if I think too much about how it might hurt my bankroll or my entire financial wealth, uh, this kind of perspective, it keeps it very simple, 
and made it a little easier to me or for me to make proper decision. Uh, of course, this book teaches you how how money can lead to freedom, um, but not to happiness. I think this is also a big misunderstanding. Happiness comes from using this freedom um, in order to uh, become healthy, to uh, build happy relationships, and of course, find your purpose, right? Um, to grow as a person, to make new experiences, maybe to travel, to learn. So money or success is just a just one milestone and then you have to go beyond that and discover more things for yourself for your friends family and so on and so forth uh, very 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 key point in this book because especially poker players once they reach or they often have this approach of yeah poker can give me this ultimate happiness through binging some terms making some money and then i have solved life Nah, it's not really working like this. And then you see a lot of poker players falling into black holes and yeah, ultimately becoming very unhappy and because they have a twisted, twisted mindset when it comes to that. The most powerful quote from this book is arm your, arm your expectations to hard work, sacrifice and other bumps in the road. These are the landmines where the weak are removed from the road and sent back to the land of most people. This has been stick within me for a while. I was tired of just being average, just being mediocre. So that really blew my mind and where I also started yeah, taking real action, working smart, working hard, but also smart. And um, Another really cool quote from this book is a safe dollar is a freedom fighter added to your army. After this, I treated my money completely different. I really like this analogy. And you might remember how I sometimes uh, use the metaphor of the, using my chips as, as my army, right? Always sending my army into the right battle with high equity. Um, so now you know where I got this from. Uh, this is just literally just a piece of value that this book provides there's so much more and everything that i'm sharing here is just just the surface should just give you a little bit of a uh, preview of this book if you want to learn or know know more about this book check it out definitely worth uh, reading especially as a poker player number four deep work from carl newport um, as you know poker is a highly mentally challenging game and only when we focus and concentrate while we study uh, we are able to recognize patterns, learn new strategy, and we're also we are also able to apply the newly gained or attained strategies into our game. Therefore, deep work is a is a great book. Uh, first and foremost, why it also explains why deep work is uh, what it means and why it is important, but how it can tremendously improve our learning curve and why it has gotten to such a um, rare attitude, and especially in these days because of social media and all these uh, distractions left and right. And according to the author, he defines deep work as professional activities performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that pushes your cognitive capabilities to their limit. These efforts create new value, improve your skill, and are hard to replicate. Uh, very 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 strong definition that really much brings it to the point uh, he, he defines shallow work as non-cognitive demanding logistical style tasks often performed while distracted these efforts tend to not create much value in the world and are easy to replicate he emphasizes on the fact that this skill has become very rare and, and i also have to admit that it feels harder in these days to, to focus and to concentrate to like say 10 or 15 years ago, especially when you have everything at hand, so many information left and right, you can you know check your social media and so on and so forth. So therefore, those who, who are able to, uh, to work really deep can gain a massive edge. And once I read this book, it made really, a light appeared in my head, if this is the right way to say it. And I started also realizing 
that I'm getting too distracted too easily. There are a lot of techniques and strategies explained in this book how you can regain your ability to really focus, to be really dialed in, to learn stuff, to concentrate and to execute like a real beast. And he also delivers scientific background why we learn faster when working in a deep state, which is really, really interesting. So he shows you, okay, if you're constantly distracted, you're essentially learning, I don't know, 30, 40, 50% slower than someone who can just focus on the task at hand. And the biggest impact I have gained from this book comes from eradicating the, the fallacy of us believing that happiness comes from relaxation. That was, that was so eye-opening for me because we all think, yeah, when we take time off, when we relax, we feel happy. And uh, yeah, especially when, you know, when we take time off and we work less and we spend more time chilling, relaxing, uh, relaxing and uh, just hanging out and simply doing nothing. And I'm going to quote the author here who says, the best moments occur when a person's body or mind is stretched to its limits in a voluntary effort to accomplish something difficult and worthwhile. This is mental state flow. And of course, he also delivers studies that, that prove his point where they measured people that were engaging in, a, in, a, in work that they really enjoyed doing, that they were happier than people that were relaxing. Of course, they were engaging in a work that they enjoyed doing. Um, and the more floor experience someone experienced throughout the week, the happier this person is. And he concludes that humans feel the greatest when they are involved in deep work activities in something challenging and experience the state flow. You might have also experienced when you engage in something and you really immerse into something and you're just, you're just in the moment, like you feel true happiness. And listen, it doesn't necessarily always has to be hard work or something. It could also be you being engaging in a very interesting conversation with a friend, spending time with others, but you're really in the zone, you're listening or sharing a story and you really enjoy it. You're not thinking about taxes and, and dinner for uh, what you're going to have for dinner or pink unicorns or whatever. You're just really there. You might have thoughts. And you just feel truly happy. And then sometimes you might wonder, but where does it come from? Where is, like, sometimes I'm randomly happy. Observe that. And you will also realize in those moments that you can, you can experience true happiness. The most practical advice he has given in this book, and I really, really like, because I would have never seen it like this, is to embrace boredom. You can do it every day. When you travel with a tram and you have to wait for five, 10 minutes, don't check your phone. Just don't do anything. This will help you to concentrate and work on a very deep level. And also working on a deep level and to focus is a skill that needs to be trained. And this is a very proper technique in order to apply or to get into the state flow. So you need to train it and you can do it everywhere without spending any money. Um, when you're with a tram, 10, 15 minutes, just keep your phone in the back or in your pockets or wherever and just observe your surrounding. Just focus on your breath, focus on what's going inside, on your thoughts. That's it. Just embrace the boredom. Boredom. Even though you might feel a little nervous because <laughs> usually you would be checking your phone, so really addicted to it. But try to, doesn't need to be every single time, but try to stay in charge. So check it out. Good read. Um, will make your studies and, 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 and the entire game much more efficient much sharper and enjoy reading it. Book number three, The One Thing from Gary Keller. As you might know, it's so easy to tackle many different projects at once. And these days we have so many opportunities and the book explains very well the importance to focus only on one thing. And why is it important? Of course, the less we focus on uh, multiple projects at once, the likelier it is that we achieve extraordinary results. And big success comes from doing a few things very well and not spreading our attention across too many different projects with mediocre results. And I want to kick it off with a very, very strong quote from the author. He says, the problem with trying to do too much is that even if it works, adding more to your work and your life without cutting brings a lot of bad with it. Missed deadlines, disappointing results. 
high stress, long hours, low sleep, poor diet, no exercise and missed moments with family and friends. All in the name of going after something that is easier to get than you might imagine. And this applied for me very, very well. And once I started incorporating the core message of this book, trying to focus only on a few things, I mean, it's not that there's always only one thing. I mean, that's a very bold statement. You're going to have some other things as well. But bottom line is trying to narrow down your focus on only a few things, ideally only one thing. And when I, a couple of years ago, when I started Raise Your Edge, I had Raise Your Edge. I was still playing poker way more than I do today. I had so many private coachings, private clients. Um, I used to work with other poker schools and stables and provide content for them. I used to have an event management um, project back then, a company I started with another friend where we hosted events, networking events uh, for, for poker players and entrepreneurs. Um, and I, I really loved all of this, but I realized I'm not doing them really, really well. So I needed to cut out if more of these. I, I, <clears throat> I took less one-on-one -on -one students. I abandoned, uh, abandoned the, the event management project. I uh, had to split apart from some of the stables and poker schools. And today I only work together with BitB and, and, and poker. So then it really kicked off i could really see how much more value i can bring to raise your edge and make it a very epic project and from like two or three people that i was working with with raise your edge today now we're a team of 20 and if you also count our esports players and also esports stuff it's like 30 players 30 people that we're working together with so you can really see the impact of cutting out as much as possible and finding the one thing that means the most to you and where you can really strive. And his approach uh, focus a lot on showing the negative impacts of us being overwhelmed with more information opportunities in a day than actually our granddads or grandmothers uh, had in their entire lives. And that is crazy. And so, in order to sum it up, multitasking comes with some sort of a mental fee that you have to pay every single time so stay away from it and yeah if you switch back it takes you longer it takes more willpower to get back to the task that you stopped it um, and of course he also shows techniques and, and and methods that you can incorporate in order to increase your productivity as well as um, yeah how to unblock the possibilities and the potential you have in order to find your one thing and especially this book in combination with deep work, these two books together, so it's a really good read together, will give you an incredible effective work ethic that yeah, will allow you to learn new concepts, new strategies in a very short period of time and yeah, simply give you a massive edge over everyone else that yeah, is multitasking, uh, is, is all over the place, trying to achieve too much in too little time. And good thing you still then have enough time for spending um, some leisure time with with your friends with your family or f fun activities uh, to enjoy yourself the next one is literally a gem it has helped me a lot and i have to admit it is a very tough read the book is called zen mind beginner's mind uh, it touches a lot on buddhism but the messages being delivered in this book are incredibly valuable. Uh, it helps you to stay humble and always willing to become better, to be happy when things are not going so well. And yeah, literally never be satisfied yet, even when you're not satisfied and things are not going so well, still to be happy. This is a, this is a combination I think is very, very hard to manage that when things are not going so well, we're in a downswing. We lose some money, still finding happiness. It's incredibly tough. It's a big challenge. And this book is a very, very good read when it comes to that. But there's another message in this book that is incredibly important, especially for poker players that will, I will touch base on later. The book shows you, of course, the importance of meditation. It touches also based on Buddhism and uses insight for a much stronger mind, higher level of self-awareness, and which are, of course, all core essentials. 
uh, for strong mindset and poker. He explains why we shouldn't be bothered too much by our thinking. And we should see the, the thoughts we have um, or the, all the, 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 the chattering as waves and the sea as your mind. As, and as it is in nature, the sea and the wave or the waves are coming together. Sometimes they're bigger and sometimes they're more calm and relaxed. And the more you fight them, the worse it will get. So by simply observing them and accepting uh, the waves, the more the, the sea or the mind will calm down. And I really like this analogy uh, because we often try to separate ourselves from our thoughts and somehow fix, avoid, suppress them, but it's not really helping. So once you start understanding that you cannot separate your thoughts from your mind, th the easier for you it is to see them as, as natural and you won't be too bothered uh, by your thoughts. And of course, he goes deeper and he shows you techniques and, 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 and explains even on a deeper level what happens in our minds when, when we don't feel so well and how meditation can help. Um, very good book. Of course, this takes effort and, uh, and practice through meditation on a regular basis. And it will also help you to stay calm in high pressure situations. So when you feel lost or you feel uh, pressure on final tables, your money scared, this book is a very good read in order to feel much more confident in those high pressure situations. Very important lesson for me personally and yeah, I, I, and I realized how little effort I actually have to put in to not let bad beats affect me too much. I always try to fight. It's like, oh, I have a bad thought that I deserve more and this bad beat really, uh, uh, yeah, really hit me and it's, it somehow bothered me and I have thoughts, yeah, that I deserve more and why did this sucker now win the hand? He played it so bad. Called a race with a he called a race with Queen Ten, honey. And then it, it started affecting me. And once I stopped trying to fight them and just see them as a, as a thought and that they're natural, we human beings, we experience negative thoughts and negative emotions and that I just simply should focus on my reaction, what I can control, it actually didn't get so bad. Like, it's not a magic pill. It's not that you will always have positive thoughts. This will never happen. You will always have negative thoughts to a certain degree. It's just the way you deal with them. It's just changing your relationship with your thoughts and with your, with your mind. And this really helped me. A great book that teaches you how to stay calm, how to accept negative thoughts and circumstances as they are and keep moving forward without being too resentful and being too attached to the past or future. Because it doesn't matter where you are in life. You can always learn. You can learn from ones that are less experienced from, uh, than you and you can learn from people that are more experienced. That's why I'm still playing uh, $11 tournaments and people think I'm broke. And I'm just, you know, I'm just laughing in the inside. I'm like, yeah, of course I'm broke. Um, but I'm not saying that, let's say you play $1,000 terms, now you should start playing low stakes. But it really helped me to not forget where I came from. Just playing the Sunday Storm on Sunday is, it, it always emphasizes on the fact that that's where I started. And I also get a better feeling for what is going on in low stakes. Uh, I don't mind playing a session NL50 or NL10 and record it and put it on YouTube. It also helps me to understand, hey, what, what, how do less experienced players think? What are, doing, are they doing in their game? How is the recreational approaching the game on these stakes? How are the regulars approaching these stakes? So I can, I can much better, uh, have a much better perception of how they approach the game once they uh, move up in stakes and I'm already better prepared. But the, the biggest advantage for me is just this, uh, yeah, staying humble and staying modest and not getting too entitled because of all the success. It doesn't mean that we should lose our confidence and think we're good and, and, and we can crush the game, but there's a difference between staying humble and modest and having confidence. You should never forget where you come, where you came from, and more importantly, never feel too good to revisit fundamentals. I had a lot of high stakes students that for some reason barely study preflop ranges. It's still a very complex game, but once you, um, 
once you become better and better, they think they need to study only the fancy shit, the, the tricky spots. But this doesn't really apply. So listen carefully to every feedback. Judge for yourself whether it's good feedback or not. But always respect every feedback, no matter if it's negative, bad feedback. And you can still decide for yourself whether someone is trolling or not. Of course, there's also a lot of bad advice. I'm not saying you should take every advice, but this book really emphasizes uh, really good on yeah, how to adopt this beginner mindset your entire poker career. My opinion, a must read. Number one, and <clears throat> this book has literally changed my life. I read it when I was t around 25, 26. Um, Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth, and yeah, it has changed my life. It is impossible to describe the massive value that this book delivers uh, here in just a few minutes. I actually really feel bad because I, there's so much more I want to share about this book. However, I'm going to share a few core principles, core messages that this book um, delivers. So if you're not really sure, uh, I give you a quick a quick recap. Of course, I don't want to spoil too much uh, for in, in respect of the author. So there's so every every review that or not review every information I deliver here. There's so much more in the books. It's just not this is not even five percent. If you're not really into reading but you want to give it a try, I, I would say start with this one because this is very eye opening. This can really show you how how much value book can deliver. Um, for me personally, once I started reading this book, I thought, Ben, you were such a fool not reading. The beginning is a little slow, and uh, especially when you haven't, much, spent, haven't spent much time learning about self-awareness and meditation, it might be a little confusing. But then the more you get into the book, it's it, it, it gets you. It's like a movie, you know, that's the first 30 minutes might not be so tense or might not be so packed with action. But then from minute to minute, it gets more packed with information, with value, with nuggets. And you're just like sitting there and you, you don't want to stop. The book teaches you everything uh, you need to know about your ego. Ego, very important for poker, of course. The relationship with our egos. Uh, and, and, and especially the, the correlation of what happens in our bodies and minds and how to let go of it, uh, how to let go of the ego or how to change the, our relationship with our ego. And Eckhart Tolle describes very well the identification with our thoughts and how it leads to, to give our egos too much power and how to identify and let go of that. Um, he, he describes the ego as some sort of um, disordered relationship with the present moment. And I really like this, uh, yeah, this definition or this explanation. And uh, the level of your self-awareness describes how disordered it is. And if we sink in, I think it hits the nail very, very well. Because in, in those moments when our egos are taking over and we're angry or we're anxious or whatever, we are not ourselves anymore. And then the bigger your ego is, the less you're in control of, the less you're actually aware of what's going on, the less you're, you're taken out of the present moment and the less you're somewhere in your head and your thoughts and your ego is taking over. But don't get caught up too much. Don't let your pain body get too addicted to all this negativity. And yeah, of course, he, he shows more methods on how to release the identification with our pain body, how to become very, very self-aware, how to stay calm, how to stay in control of our emotions, how to observe and accept uh, and let go of negative thoughts so that we yeah kill the vicious cycle and being able to enjoy the present moment to its fullest beauty. Um, especially learning a lot about our ego and bring more happiness and peace in our life makes this book so powerful especially for poker players because uh, when things are not going so well it's so easy to attach our our lives and our level of happiness to the outcome of yeah our poker results and our happiness correlates with the results of, of in, in poker but this is not the way it's supposed to be even if you don't play poker, I think it's a must read to understand our body, understand our mind and emotions, to bring more empathy, joy, love and happiness into your life. Has changed my life and I'm certain I'm, I'm very certain it will yours. I really hope you enjoyed my top five list. Uh, this is 
I think a strong toolbox of books that will give you a huge advantage over your competitors. So uh, make sure to check it out. What are your books? What are the books that you think are worth reading if you want to strengthen your, your, your mindset in poker? Maybe not necessarily a poker mindset book. I, we all know the, the common mindset books for poker, but the books that focus actually more on life, but we can use those concepts that are being taught in this book and mirror it into poker in order to strengthen our mindset. Drop it down in the comments. Let me know. I'm really curious to read. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.